And we're live. All right. Good afternoon, fellow uh, marketers, business owners. I don't know what we call them. I love the go. word brain tenders, but I know Christian gets mad about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I was watching an episode a while ago about brain tenders, and I was dying laughing because I know Christian, Christian was like, Hello, brain tenors, trying to make fun of me, but I wasn't doing a very good, wasn't doing a very good job. Uh, it's, I'm just, I don't like it because it's not a thing, you know? We don't have regulars anymore. All right. We used to. When we start getting regulars, then you can start saying that. Well, anyway, so this show is a live show on YouTube now where we brainstorm 10 ideas, really uh, 10 plus ideas twice per week on how to grow your business. Tuesdays are always tactics on, on how to use like Facebook or color schemes for logos. And Friday is always new text products and services, maybe some updates on social media. And that is what we have today. Uh, this is episode 105 and we got three hosts today. Uh, my name is Aaron. My name is Christian. And my name is Franklin. And uh, I don't think we have any old business to talk about. Just uh, this is the Friday episode, so we're excited. But uh, we got some really good stuff, and I think Christian is starting us off. As always, <laughs> all right. So sorry, I was tweeting, making sure that our Twitter, Twitter, Twitter world knows of our, our live video. Uh, I really is. All right. So number one, I have free drum. And it's a drum kit that basically fits in your pocket. The, the guys who invented this basically created uh, like little sensors that you can just put in <laughs> into your, uh, your drumsticks, any drumsticks, it works with any drumsticks. And you can basically play the air drums, but it syncs to, I think it's an app on your phone. So you get to plug that into your phone and you can actually hear exactly what you're playing uh, while you're airplane and also have like what sensor for your foot so you can do the the foot one um, I remember this is like maybe like a week ago. I saw it on Facebook someone posted it on Facebook I was like, oh my gosh, that's like super cool So I looked them up on Kickstarter and they've already like blown their pledge out of proportion They pledged for 150,000. They're over 300,000 right now and uh, Wow it looks like, yeah, so August 2017, next year, uh, it's when they uh, are planning on releasing this or the estimated delivery. Uh, it looks freaking awesome, and it, it automatically syncs with your the app or your computer, too, so you can actually record music that way as well. Uh, so it's not just for practice if you're on the go. You can actually record legitimate music with this, which is pretty awesome. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, uh, who, who doesn't like to play air drums or air guitar? You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Even though the smart would never be this high. Right. <laughs> yep. Very cool. <clears throat> May have to get one. Did they say how much they were? Oh, okay, okay. I see you down there. The really good ones are... You know, about four hundred bucks. Oh, thousand bucks. <laughs> but hey, that's cool. All right, let's move on to number two. It's actually called FET. Think of it kind of like pet, but it's FET, and <laughs> the it's I think it's French because they kind of have those little accent uh, goo kind of things on there. I don't know. But what's cool about this is it is an invitation app from, or from your phone sent as like a text message. But the cool thing about it is that you can, you can sync it up to Facebook, you can grab the links from a bunch of different places, and people can reply right there, like put a Y or an N on whether or not they're going to go. And if you're trying to think of somewhere cool to go, so for example, I'm thinking, you know, this year I'm going to do something a lot better for Aaron's party 2017 instead of, and it's an annual party that we do every year, but obviously annually. But you can actually put the date and the location, and people can make suggestions. So you can like unlock that part, 
and people can see it in real time off in the app. Like, oh, these are suggestions and these are dates. And it's like, oh, the majority can go first weekend of June. Perfect. And it looks like we want to go to Colorado and go whitewater rafting. Perfect. And then everything just kind of sinks over. Um, it's pretty cool. And it's free. Wow. Yeah, I like the fact that it's all done through text, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it also gives you the ability to interact with the people that are actually going to be able to come to the event. Makes it makes people really want to use it and stay engaged with what's going to happen. That that's kind of like throwing a house party, and everybody agreeing on like this is going to be the greatest house party ever. Right. Yeah. It actually, even happens. I like that. Yeah, like and it. and it it does. It syncs up with those Facebook and Twitter and all of those. And it's cool because you can send out reminders like, hey, it's coming, you know, it's one, one week away. Don't forget to bring the salsa or don't forget to bring the Coors Light. Like, um, <laughs> yes. Coors Light. Wow. Yes. yes. All right. Well, um, after a night of partying, after you've scheduled it out with FET, uh, a lot of people like to drink coffee and i consider myself to be i guess you can say uh no i'm not a person, addicted but yeah i am addicted to coffee i am so i will call myself my personal barista uh so this next item uh that we're going to talk about is actually pretty cool it's called gina it's the smart gina g-i-n-a uh the smart coffee instrument by goat story like it's probably the greatest thing that I've seen on the internet all week. <laughs> it is actually kind of like a, if you know anything about coffee, there are multiple different ways that you can actually brew it, where it'd be French press, uh, French press, uh, that which can be hot or cold. Um, you can do the classic coffee maker, Keurig. Uh, they actually have uh, AeroPress. There's another... <sighs> There are a bunch of different ways to actually do it. Um, pour over, blah, blah, blah. Well, this is actually like an instrument that will measure how potent your coffee is going to be whenever you brew it. It's, uh, and it's connected to an actual phone. App. It's, uh, it's connected to an application on your phone. And it gives you the ability to like measure it and try to basically help you perfect your coffee brewing. Uh, and it's actually in a pour over method. And whenever you pour it over, it actually like you can cover it. And I don't know exactly how much more things that this thing can do. And it actually has a heating pot at the bottom of it that's USB powered. Um, what else can this thing do? The wow. cool thing that I like about it, the, the coolest thing about it is that you can share your uh share the results of your coffee brewing with other people that have have this thing and are connected and have profiles in it so you can let's say if i brew the greatest cup of coffee on the face of the planet which i believe that i can uh, <laughs> right now uh and i wanted to share it with you guys and we all had this thing we could all like measure the amount of what what does it come what does it show in the statistics um how much coffee was brewed, how long it took to brew it. And like, it just basically helps you share your coffee brewing methods. It's awesome. I like it. I like it a lot. I kind of want one today. Yeah. I didn't think that coffee brewing was like an art until I did a little internship in Claremore with a sign shop. And the guy there, he had like a legitimate, like awesome, like coffee maker machine thing. And he would make me coffee because I was like, yeah, whatever. But yeah, dude, he like he was so like intricate with all these little things, and I don't know, it's just awesome. But yeah, that thing looks, it looks like a, it reminds me of like a, like a high school um, kind of uh, beaker and <laughs> yeah, it, it really does, yeah. man. It's crazy. But yeah, that makes it look a lot cooler too. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm intrigued. And of course, they've already met their goal. They, their goal was their pledge goal was fifty thousand oh, dollars. They're at three hundred thirty-six thousand seven hundred and fifty-three dollars. 
and they still have 28 yeah. days to go. Dang. Yes. Yeah. I kind of want this, guys. It's not bad. You can get it for $160. That's like... Exactly. change. They have some espresso machines that are that much. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want this. Run it on my bucket list. <laughs> bucket list. Christmas list. Yeah. All right. So at number four, we got Gritics. And the only reason why I found this was, I think, again, I was on Facebook, and I was looking at some visitor posts on Social Media Examiner's Facebook page, and someone was asking them, was there a way for them to schedule posts on Facebook groups? And they say that it's not possible to do it natively through Facebook, but it is. they use this tool called Gridix. And, uh, yeah, it gives you the ability to schedule posts on Facebook groups, which, Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's, that's not possible right now, right? Even with, no. like, Hootsuite or Buffer or anything like that? No, I don't believe so. Okay. So I'm guessing that's why they, why they use this particular um, uh, software. Um, but yeah, uh, if you're interested in, I mean, if you're big into uh, Facebook groups and you're trying to grow a community uh, around like-minded people and you want to set up some automated uh, publishing, like simple status, links, pictures, videos, then uh, this particular feature, it's available for their premium pro or enterprise subscribers. So I guess they have a bunch of other features with Gridix. And that's included in one of their uh, pricing brackets, some of those pricing brackets, like the pro, premium, and all that. Uh, so you're talking about uh, the cheapest one would be like the premium, so that's $12 a month. Um, and you get up to, you can post up to five different groups. Uh, and you get, uh, what is that called? Analytics. Analytics. Uh, yeah, you get a lot of good analytics for for your groups. Cool. cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that's something that we should, I mean, definitely going to talk about tomorrow in a business plan is starting an actual Facebook group, which we've talked about in the past, so that may be helpful. Yeah. Nice. All right, number five is called Hop, and obviously just really generic. I think they just picked the name, but it isn't a new email system and I believe it is free. I need to check that actually. Uh, yes, it is free. I just wanted to double check. But what's cool about this is I've been looking a lot at Polymail, Airmail, all those different mail apps because people are constantly updating and trying to make them better. The one thing that I saw that was different about this than uh, the other ones is that you can have like groups inside of the email. So, um, Pretty cool to collaborate and say, you know, we have projects going on and email conversations and you can basically come uh, talk back and forth, but mm -hmm. more is like, yeah. Um, can't really hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. It's like cutting off on your end. Do you hear that too, Franklin, or is it smooth? No, I, I, uh, everything I heard him say, everything. Okay. All right. So just keep going. Sorry. Okay. Anyway, so you can do up to uh, all messages and files in one place and up to 100 people in one group all talking about something in an email. And this makes it a little bit better than a text message because you can actually reference it later. All the data is there. Um, but it's just so you can do more work-related stuff right there. And um, really cool, big, bold images. It reminds me a lot of a text messaging app, but it is an email. So... That was pretty cool. And mm -hmm. it's free. Wow. So let me ask you this. Um, is there a desktop version of this? I don't know. Because, yeah, this is for iOS. This um, is for iOS. Yeah. And yeah. can you have multiple email accounts set up? Yes. On? Yeah, they have it set up for uh, all major email accounts. So your, your map, your POP3... Google, Hotmail, all of that. 
So it's kind of nice. And it syncs, I believe it also syncs with your calendar and, you know, all the major stuff that you need to do like that too. Man, it sounds like if you deleted, if you deleted your email app, your calendar app, you could integrate them both with that application. Sounds pretty cool. And I've just, I just got to, got used to using Polymail. It's pretty fluent, but like that right there would, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. And one thing that Polymail doesn't have is the, is the group messaging feature to where you can create a group and actually send out like a group email, like and save that particular group. I think I might be switching. <sighs> Thanks, Aaron. I appreciate that. So I'm writing that down too. Huh. Okay, so I'm moving on to my next one, and I'm going to stay on the subject of emails. Um, for us, uh, Rival uh, Rival Explorer, uh, it's a it's an app, a web based application that allows you to monitor and evaluate other brands. Uh, emails that they send out like basically let's say if we wanted to Her. if you wanted to view American Eagles email blast Abercrombie and Fitch's email blast and uh, Ralph Lauren you could gather those three brands put them in this application and it would pull up their email campaigns and you can evaluate them to see what would be best for your client if they were a an apparel brand and try to basically figure out what are the best features in those email uh, blasts that they're sending out to basically uh, convert whoever you're sending the emails to, to purchases. And hmm. the great thing about this is that it is free. Uh, oh, for, cool. Uh, it's free for one user. And then whenever you go up to like the, what they call the enterprise and the agency levels, you have to pay. And the other cool thing about it is that Every free every feature that is available on all enterprise and the agency features are completely available on the pro version, which is free. Uh, they're just a couple of additional they have, uh, like reporting analytics and things like that that are uh, available in the agency and the enterprise uh, and the agency and the enterprise packages. But the pro package has everything all the way up until like the like the last like four let's say I want to say like it has like ten additional features on the other ones that aren't uh, in the pro version. But if you know what you're looking for from a designer or a marketer standpoint, you can like visually like make your own notes in the free version and actually use it to create your own email campaign. Dude, yeah, I love it. That's like. Awesome. I mean, it's a good inspiration too. If you're looking to redesign your your newsletter or template or whatever, exactly. Yeah, just I was go to say everyone's doing. It. Right. I was gonna say we can use that for our clients we have currently. Mm -hmm. Fresh new ideas. It's and the other thing that I'm seeing now is that it actually gives you the ability to look at it on. Uh, you know how you can see a preview of it on a tablet or a, a smartphone uh, it gives you the ability to like switch in between what device you're going to be viewing the email mm. just mm. like if you were creating an email campaign i like it i like that a lot even though people say that email is dead email i i really feel like even if you are if you have a large e email database and you have like a hundred hundred thousand emails in it, it if only 2% open that email, 2% of 100,000 is what? 2,000? Aaron, you're good <laughs> yeah. with numbers. Yes, it is. But regardless, no, email lists are not dead. We've actually had a conversation about this, so we'll, we can get in that another time. Build your email lists. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Number seven, it's a little bit of an update with Twitter. I don't know why Twitter's doing this, but... Twitter's rolling out a uh, Snapchat-like QR code for your profile. This is just available for some users. So, guys, check it out right now. If you have Twitter, you have your phone with you. Uh, go to the little gear icon right there. And then when that pops up, it should say QR code. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, it should show you a little QR code. So you can snap a picture of that or post it wherever. And Where does this go again? Where do, how do I do it again? Tell me one more time. Oh, I got it. Your little gear. Yeah. Cool. This one's so much cooler. Than, look at that guy. Yeah, it changes colors every time. If you switch from the scanner, so you have the scanner, so it pulls up the camera, or you can do the QR code, and it changes color. So right now time. it's black. Huh. I, feel like yeah, I don't know why it does that. But. I feel like I'm being yeah. left out. Like, I don't, I don't see that. I see the gear, and then yeah. I don't see anything else. Well, Franklin, I'm sorry to tell you, but... Give me uh, the instructions again. You, you will not be, <laughs> I will not be left out of this. Well, it, th that's the thing. The, the article talks about how they're doing a slow rollout, so it's available just for some users. Cooler I ones. <coughs> I might be some users. I might be some users. <laughs> I press the gear, and then what? And then it should be right there. It's like not. that's it. Yeah, so it's QR codes. So yeah, that's a like, Q and an R. Yeah, so once you click on it, you see it says QR. It's not there. Okay. Well, sorry, Franklin. We'll show you after the show is done. <clears throat> but I don't know. I mean, I, I don't understand why they're doing this. I guess they're trying just to do whatever they can to save the company. <laughs> but, I mean, QR codes to me, they're kind of obsolete. They're, I think they're old technology, really. And uh, didn't we have a conversation about this during the summer? Like, when we were talking about, like, how... Uh, I think I mentioned to you guys about like putting QR code stickers on like random pokey spots whenever Pokemon was a thing during mm -hmm. the summer. Uh, and you said those exact words. QR codes are is old technology. Yep. Uh, yep, we did. I think this is Twitter's desperate attempt to it's like they're that uh at Call of Duty whenever you're trying to make sure that you don't die. Uh what do they call that? Can't relate. Uh -huh. Yeah, I can't relate either. <laughs> it's okay. All right, we'll just move We're, on. We'll just move on. It's no problem. No problem. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, just kidding. All right, number eight is called BS Detector. Uh, this is when Zucks talked the other day, I think it was like on Tuesday, about how they're going to start punishing or trying to figure out a way to punish people who are like websites that are putting out basically false articles could be political or, or otherwise. And this guy created it. I mean, like a super coder or whatever. He said he built it in two days. But it's a Chrome extensions that help you identify fake or false news on Facebook. Wow. And, um, you know, basically, so you can say like, hey, my friend said that Donald Trump actually can fly. And, or, you know, Hillary Clinton is, you know, just gave a billion dollars to Facebook. Like stuff that people would actually believe because there are people that would believe it for some reason. And this article will like highlight down below, like this may be, it doesn't say BS, but this may, article may not be reliable or something like that. Yeah, there's a lot of back and forth and I've seen some stuff online too. Uh, some people think that, you know, I mean the, the articles that you just mentioned are like, obviously you can tell that they're lies, but um, like it goes to a point where okay, who really decides what's a lie and what's not? Or, you know, because, I mean, whatever, the stuff that you said, it was like, yeah, it's obviously not real. But whenever you get into, like, a play on words type thing where, okay, this might be true, this might not be true, or they're just telling half truth, or they're just, you know, bending the truth a little bit uh, to cover their, you know, their point of view. On, on a certain subject, and that's when the problem arises, and that's where uh, people are not happy about that, about the fact that Zuckerberg and Google, actually, as well, um, are doing that. <clears throat> uh, but, I mean, I agree with you with the fact that, you know, if it's something, like, outrageous, like, that it's obviously fake, then, yeah, that shouldn't be on, on Facebook. Right. You know. I actually... Uh, last night on the news, they were talking like really majorly big on how they feel like the media, uh, not the direct media, but how the internet and social media was like one of the major parts that play, uh, that played into uh, the election, which is what sparked that. A lot of people were upset that a lot of stories that were coming out about like the Pope, that was one of the big stories that was like 
extremely false that the Pope backs Donald Trump, which was one of the one of the articles that prompted this conversation. Well, not this particular conversation, but you know, the global conversation. Okay, I'll move on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll move to the next topic, which is uh, mine, uh, which is WhatsApp has finally added a uh, mobile video, uh, uh, video conferencing, video calls. Um, I don't know. I learned about WhatsApp back in like a couple years ago i had some friends that were overseas and the only way that i could text them was 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 with whatsapp and it's been an application that many people that i know that aren't from this country still communicate with their friends overseas uh overseas and in other countries that are actually here uh but now what's cool is they've actually added in the ability to call inside whatsapp and to Send, send, and have uh, like basically FaceTime within WhatsApp. Hmm. Yeah, I know WhatsApp. It's like huge in Puerto Rico and Latin America because they don't. Uh, I mean, a lot of countries don't, or a lot of yeah, uh, cell phone carriers don't offer the unlimited text message. So that's what they use to text, basically. Uh, and, and like everyone, everyone in Puerto Rico uses it. Exactly. But yeah, now they're trying to take over and be the the, <clears throat> the new FaceTime, the new mobile uh, face people, the, the, like the new right. universal FaceTime. Rather, but yeah, I think that that's one of the other major things that, about it is that you don't have to have an iPhone to have this app, right? And mm -hmm. or to video chat with somebody that doesn't have an iPhone. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I know it's huge, and obviously Facebook owns it, so it's even bigger. I did not know that. I learned something today. There you go. All right, All right. what's next? Uh, number 10, photo scan by Google. This is just a new app made by Google that allows you to scan basically old photos. And it's pretty cool. You take your first picture, and then you take a picture on the corner, another corner, another corner, another corner. And it basically automatically gives you a high quality picture on your phone. And it's not just a picture of a picture. It looks like a pretty good scan. And uh, it's pretty simple and basic. And you can mess around with some of the uh, like filters and stuff and uh, light and color controls, highlights and shadows. Uh, but they're working actually because I saw this on Product Hunt. They're actually working on the ability to get rid of scratches and things like that on like really old photos. So we need this. To... I need this. Like uh, my yeah. grandma wants like bad. My grandma really wants uh, Brianna and I's vows from the wedding, and we need to scan them. But her computer is not connecting to it, so this will help out a lot. Well, it is for photos, but I, I mean, I don't know if it will work on actual. Oh, uh, no documents? Dang. Well, you can use everything for that. Just kind of scan it? Like... Uh huh. Pretty sure Evernote has that ability for you to yeah, take pictures of documents and you can like save them as PDFs. That, that's yeah. kind of, that for photographers, though, that's going to be like something that's extremely scary because a lot of photographers that don't actually like to shoot anymore that's like a major part of their business is uh photo restore restoration like mm -hmm. getting old photos getting them back and actually manually uh restoring them and providing a digital copy but actually restoring the actual physical image itself that's mm -hmm. but at the same time for someone like me that doesn't want to take my mom's photos of me that are old from the house, but I just want a digital copy of it. I can go home, take a picture of it, scan it, and have it in my phone. And then whenever I get to my house, I can print it out and have an actual new copy of it. Yeah, or have a folder on your phone for Throwback Thursday. Exactly. Right. Uh, everybody's sure. done that. <laughs> All right, we got to kind of hurry up because I have 5% battery. Um, so I'm gonna go through my last one quickly. I'm gonna have to run to to the to the spot to get this 
Um, whatever. Anyway, so this one, next one, number 11, is probably the coolest one I've seen today because I'm going to use it a bunch. And Franklin, I think you may use it too. It's called Refly. And it's an editor on a Mac app, or it's a Mac app that is, um, it's free. And it is for bloggers, content marketers, or people who are just writing. And you can write the title of your blog up at the top. You write in the middle of it. And there's actually a Chrome, ex or there's a plugin for this on WordPress called like uh, Yoast SEO, or SEO Yoast or something like that, where it will tell you like, hey, you're using the keywords, or you're using... Uh, the grammar effectively, you need to make sure that you use the keyword in the first paragraph. You need to make sure that you use the keyword in the title, et cetera, et cetera, which is good. But the second part is that it helps you with your grammar spelling all in one document. And so it'll give you like an error and then it'll tell you like, oh, did you mean to say this? And then you literally click the button and it changes the phrase for you. Yeah, I did see that during the week and I did download it to my computer because it is a Mac app, um, but I haven't played with it yet. Pretty sweet. I did a couple of tests earlier and it was like, wow. Like I did one sentence I thought was good and then one sentence I know I did, I messed up on purpose and I was like, hey, I'm trying to rank for the keyword Facebook Live and it was like, well, you need to do this, you need to do this and it gives you like green check marks on if you hit everything or not and then it will help your grammar and spelling too. Whoa. That's pretty cool. That is, that's, that's a game changer for me. I, I can't spell for crap. And <laughs> um, knowing where to put a comma, it still baffles me. I don't like understand <laughs> other than separating that I'm actually giving you multiple words in the sentence and I'm going to bring uh, apples, comma, oranges, comma, and strawberries and period at the end like that's how i know where commas go but like yeah. <laughs> but other than that I, mm -mm. if we're not talking Christian, about are comedy, you making fun of him that's yes. kind of rude the, the, <laughs> he can make fun of me because i i'm if if we were talking about coding and commas then i know but like writing a serious uh, like a, like writing a serious paragraph no 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 i take pictures and record video that's what i do for it. boom and mic drop. All right, Franklin, give us board view, and I got 3%. <laughs> All right, because Aaron has 3% on his laptop. Let me go through this really, really quick. Board view is something that I think that we will all use uh, a lot more, uh, a lot if we decide to use it, but Aaron especially, because board view gives you a visual of your marketing strategy, and it actually gives you the Ooh. ability to uh, monitor certain sections of that particular marketing strategy visually. And also if there are people that are actually involved with or the certain parts of it, you know how you can keep up with like uh, stats or positions within your particular part of the marketing strategy and see like how far along it is and how effective it's working. Boom. Huh. Then, I'll drop, then I'll drop the mic. <laughs> Dang. And yeah, that's also, a... guess what? It's free. Boom. Double mic drop, just like two of them. Yes, it is free for uh, single use. Um, but that's why I say that, you know, like you'd be the main one using it. And uh, you can keep it up visually and like it tracks everything. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, I'm going to leave that page up. Yes. All right. Uh, I successfully have 3% left. We're going to close out this episode. Really good episode. Uh, I got a couple of apps that I'm going to check out, and we can all just scan each other's QR codes on Twitter, so great takeaway there. Thanks, Christian. Not mine, because I don't have one. Well, we're going to all scan, and by all, I mean two of us out of three, so that's at like 77 percent, and that's great, guys. So uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, some free apps and a lot of good t new tech products that we're going to be able to use, and so good job, and been using the word and a lot. Holy cow. But again, this is episode 105 of Brain 10, where um, this is not where you ask your marketing questions, but I was about to say that. <laughs> where we brainstorm 10 ideas twice per week on Tuesdays and Fridays. This is our tech episode. And I think that's it. But again, my name is Aaron. My name is Christian. And I'm Franklin. All right.
And we'll see you guys next Tuesday at 2.30 Central Daylight Time. Peace. Standard time. Dang it.